Secret Talk, Putin, Hillary, Trump, Obama, Full Transcript. By Mikhail Krizanovsky, a former KGB spy and CIA filament, the author of the White House Special Handbook, 2007, and Espionage and Counterespionage Handbook, 2012. Plus bonus. Putin, the Boomerang Operation. July 21, 2017. In an interview with NBC News, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov suggested that in addition to the previously undisclosed meeting between Trump and Putin, there might be even more secret meetings between the two world leaders that have yet to be revealed. Introduction Recruitment 1. Russian SVR, Foreign Intelligence Service, former KGB starts a file on any American citizen with big money and political connections who talks positive about President Putin. Attention, SVI was files on all American politicians who make statements on their possible run for the U.S. president. Trump made such statements and he was running for the president in 2000. 2. SVR file on Trump appeared in 2008 with the purpose of his recruitment and receiving political information from his multiple sources in the U.S. Congress and the White House. 3. SVR officers under cover of the Russian consular diplomats met Trump in New York City in 2012 to 2013 and made him a very generous offer, he can get a green light to any projects in Russia in exchange for his spying for the Russian government. Trump refused the offer. That's why Putin ordered SVR director Mikhail Fradkov to prepare a special operation, place Trump into a compromising sexual situation, blackmail him and recruit as a secret source. 4. Prostitutes were SVR female officers, Trump was too big a target to trust the street hookers. They were instructed to play most pervert sexual games, with Trump including a golden shower. Brown shower and pig slave, sorry I can't go into details, check porno sites and magazines for that, please. 5. Miss Universe 2013, the 62nd Miss Universe pageant, was held on November, 9, 2013 at the Crocus City Hall, Krasnogorsk, a suburb of Moscow, Russia. Trump came a week before and stayed at the Ritz-Carlton. His Russian assistants recommended him the best Russian prostitutes ready to make him happy. Trump agreed and put himself in a trap. Alina Golovkova and Fizichnik. These two might be connected to the case. 6. After the pageant was over, SVR officers met Trump at the hotel and left a tape and a phone number. He had no choice. They were back and he signed the regular agreement, I, Donald Trump. Agree to help SVR and improve Russian-American relations. I'll sign my confidential reports with the alias underscore. November 9, 2013. July 9, 2017. Hamburg, Germany. G20 heads of state dinner, separate room. 9.00 p.m. Present: Donald Trump, the U.S. President, Vladimir Putin, the President of Russia, Putin's translator. Trump. Hey, Vlad, how's vodka and caviar? Putin. Russian stuff is better. Should we speak German? Trump. Then send your translator home. Putin. He's not a translator. Meet General Petrov, Russian intelligence, your handler. That's why I've asked you to send your guy home. Trump. Okay. Putin. You still have questions. One hour is okay? Trump. We'll see. Listen. Do you want to kill me? I mean, one-way ticket, or how you guys call it. Putin. I know it's hard. Trump. Tell the truth. Putin. And the truth shall make you free. Trump. Democracy makes me free. Putin. Bull. Democracy is the bone you throw to the people to choke them to death. Your job is hard. Rockefellers and Rothschilds want you to start war against Russia for our gas and oil. I want you to sabotage this shit. Remember, I've placed you in the Oval Office to postpone the war, four years at least. Or you are dead. Am I clear? Trump. Yes.
Putin. Before I fire back, I blow you up together with your useless family. Trump. I try hard, but they bought the media and the F media killing me. Putin. I know. But if you see dead end, break the wall and keep going. Trump. Huh? Putin. BOIL America up to a civil war. You've kicked Muslims, good. Now kick blacks. Trump. I tried hard, it didn't work. Putin. Erase Obamacare, welfare, Medicaid, food stamps. Starve them to death, let them die in emergency rooms. They start riots, you start shooting until I see America collapse. I see, understand? Trump. I'm not stupid. Strange. Putin. What? Trump. Me. Working for you. F Moscow, F Miss Universe, Fugue Prostitutes. Putin. Easy on our operatives, man. They just do their job. And there's nothing strange. You're not the first, you're not the last, my man. Think of yourself. Sorry, but you look like F schizophrenic. Trump. I'm not. Vlad. What the F are you talking about? Putin. I'm talking business. Dems gonna impeach you because you're sick? Trump. Me? Petrov. Sorry, comrade, but our experts in Kremlin don't like what they see. Hostility, suspiciousness, extreme reaction to criticism, your anti-media attitude. Odd or irrational statements, we build the anti-Mexican wall and Mexico gonna pay for it. Delusions of grandeur, you believe that you're a unique human being, like Jesus, on a mission to save America. Your malignant narcissism is beyond any explanation. Your behavior is bizarre, you treat women as sexual slaves. Your thinking and speech are disorganized, speech often includes putting together meaningless words that can't be understood. It's word salad. That means you promise to fix everything, healthcare, immigration, Palestinian problem, but you have no idea what to do. You have delusions, false beliefs that are not based in reality. One of the biggest, with no proof at all, is your false contention that you lost national popular vote because of illegal votes. Your behavior in public is disorganized and abnormal. Your appearances are really scary because they usually end up in unpredictable agitation no matter what the question or problem is under discussion. You are a pathological liar, no matter what facts people have to prove you're wrong. And you might end up in a suicide if your schizophrenia is untreated at all. Putin. We gonna put you on medication, brother. Trump. I'm ready. I need a drink. Two, three. 4. Putin. We got vodka. Mr. Petrov, where's your bag? Here it is. Vodka, caviar, pickles, rye bread, happiness. Cheers. Trump. Cheers. It's good. Listen, I've heard some rumors on Bill and Hillary. Putin. We recruited Bill on December 31, 1969, when he poor Oxford student and anti-Vietnam War activist came to Moscow through Holland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland for five-day vacation at super expensive National Hotel. The only person Bill knew in Moscow was Anik Nikki Alexis, a daughter of a French diplomat. He took a bus out to La Mumba University to have dinner with Nikki. On the bus back home there was only one other passenger, Oleg Rakito. KGB officer who recruited him right there. $10,000. Trump. He was nobody. Why him? Putin. Well, you brainwash young guys easier and faster than adults, you build their careers the way you want. American Oxford guys always have a chance to occupy the Oval Office one day. We helped him a lot. Erased some bad guys and girls on the way. Trump. Clinton's death list. 31 American citizens. Putin. Right. Dirty job, even if you kill a hooker like Judy Gibbs. Trump. How he got to the Oval Office. Putin. I talked to my old friend Kissinger. Trump. Bilderberg Club, I was there once. Putin. In June 1992, 
we've sent Bill to Baden-Baden, here, Germany, to the annual meeting. David Rockefeller and Kissinger liked him. Simple. Trump. Can't believe this. How you broke Bush, the father. Putin. He was a very good one-term president. He knew about Bilderberg and he made a huge mistake. His guy called Clinton and demanded to quit the campaign. And we understood that Bush is scared to death of him. He broke himself, idiot. Trump. And Russia joined G7. Putin. That was his job. Trump. Hillary. Putin. You're gonna laugh, but it was Bilderberg again. Trump. You rule Kissinger, you rule the world. Putin. Exactly, my friend. On June 6, 2008 they had a meeting at Westfield's Marriott Hotel, Chantilly, Northern Virginia, to see the candidates in person make a choice between Hillary and Obama, both denied the fact, of course. Trump. And next day Hillary announced she's out of the race. Kissinger didn't like her? Putin, I didn't like her. She said I have no soul because I'm KGB. So, it was personal, you know. Trump. But she got another chance last year. Putin. Begging Kissinger on her knees for eight years. Strong girl. Trump. Lesbians are strong. Putin. Henry said she's sorry and she can give me something. Trump. Emails. Putin. Smart agent, love you. Emails. Her computer was just a spy drop box. Information wasn't top secret, though. Trump. You knew she's gonna lose. Putin. She's a hawk. She could start the war against us right away. No way. Trump. Obama? Putin. You blame Obama too much, that's a sign of political weakness, my friend. Trump. Never again. Putin. Good boy. Obama is more than an agent. Comrade Petrov was working with him. Petrov. Obama is our illegal intelligence department officer, not a recruited agent. You gonna work with him soon. Trump. Wow. Petrov. We used a birth certificate of a newborn child, Virginia Sunahara, who died at birth or soon after birth in Hawaii. Obama was born in Moscow to a student from Kenya and a Russian girl. Very smart guy, we trained him individually as a legal intelligence officer. After special training Obama went through a broad transformation process. A. A legal probation period abroad. A trip abroad through intermediate countries with numerous changes of passports and cover stories, jobs, personal connections. Finally, he gets to the target country, stays there for another one two years and goes back to his country for additional training and correction of the cover story. Actually, it's his first combat assignment. The most important part of this assignment is to check the reliability of the cover story and documents. The cover story has to be reinforced with new and old true facts, like short-term studies at universities or professional training courses. B. Intermediate legislation. On his way back to Russia the officer could stay in an intermediate country for another one two years, make contacts with business, scientists, government employees, celebrities. C. Basic legislation. Officer comes to the target country, obtains genuine documents, gets a job which allows him to travel and talk to many people, recruit informants thus creating an illegal station. Trump. I'm speechless. Putin. Not until you're dead. Trump. I'm not scared of death if I don't feel it. Putin. You won't. Comrade Petrov? Petrov. We use a sniper and kill American president if he turns into a real danger for us, we use a passive sabotage technology. Trump. Never heard. Petrov. We recruit three helpers, the US Secret Service Director, FBI Director, CIA Director. Let me show you how we killed JFK what it would have happened if the snipers missed the target or Kennedy survived, being merely wounded. Sniper is a human being. He makes mistakes. Kennedy would have won the 1964 presidential election and then conceivably his brothers, 
Robert and Edward, would keep the Oval Office until 1984, count the years for yourself. No war in Vietnam. The CIA would have been shut down. The FBI and Pentagon would have been cleaned up and cleaned out. Why would the CIA, FBI and big business behind them, not to mention others who had their eye on the Oval Office, take such a huge risk? There was no risk at all and there was no huge conspiracy. There was a passive sabotage operation. CIA Director John McCone, FBI Director Edgar Hoover and Secret Service Director James Rowley made a deal not to touch Lee Harvey Oswald until operation is over. Trump Perfect technology because it's simple, cheap and it works. Putin. Sometimes we use CIA or Secret Service killers. Trump. Fake information. Putin. Petrov? Petrov. Look at this paper. They protect you when you come to New York City. Trump. Let's be positive. Putin. Agree. We need you, Donald to implement the New World Order or a controlled chaos strategy, Russian New World Order to be established through the international chaos, permanent wars, civil wars and revolutions. Trump. Controlled chaos? Sounds familiar. Putin. Petrov? Petrov. Controlled chaos strategy is a geopolitical redivision of the world by provoking riots, revolutions, civil wars and overthrowing regimes in independent from Russia's sovereign states to keep the Russia's world hegemony. Political, national, religious and social conflicts in target countries have to be permanent. The strategy is being covered by a struggle against international terrorism. The operation is preceded by information war against the target regime and backed by Russia's forces if necessary. Trump. I can do it. But you have to give me something, I mean, foreign policy. Iran, North Korea, Syria. Putin. Too late. I made deals on Korea with China, and other two been negotiated with Israel. Trump. Okay, whatever happens. It's my success too, okay? And I can lift Mother Earthing sanctions if you want. Putin. No, we, Russians, love to fight problems, especially when we're hungry. My rating is 86%. I have presidential elections in 2018 and I have to win my next six years in the office. Trump. Yes, boss. Putin. Okay. One more thing. You've turned the Oval Office into a death row, I don't care. But you can't F your own Congress, I don't like it. Trump. It's not Russia, Vlad. Putin. It's not. It's much easier shit. Petrov? Petrov. Comrade Trump, what do you think about Jesus? Trump. He couldn't change the world. Petrov. Correct. Don't change Congress, manage it. Trump. I have no effing experience. Petrov. Strong man always get out of shit, but smart man never gets in. That's why I'm here. It's much more simple that you think. Your popular support affects congressional response to your politics. If a senator is blocking the your proposal, he wants to get your attention. All senators are corrupted mother FRS and shift from one committee to another. A good choice is those dealing with taxes, budget, energy, commerce. Senators avoid responsibility in economic policy. Senators are afraid to vote against a defense budget increase because then they may be accused of a lack of patriotism. You must have insiders among Dems in the Senate. A legislator does exactly what his voters want him to do, stealing federal money from other states and districts, because for him the most important thing is numbers polls in his state showing how many people approve his activity. His donors watch these numbers too and estimate their investment and the necessity to support re-election. A senator makes a decision only after thinking about what it means in terms of the re-election money that will come to him or to his opponents. You can give favors directly to members of Congress or to influential people in their constituency, or the favor may be of benefit to the constituency itself. Appointments with the president and other high-ranking officials, federal grants to recipients in the constituency, 
government contracts with local companies, the deposit of federal funds in banks, grants to local government and educational institutions, support of projects, military installations, research and administrative facilities, public works such as buildings, dams and navigational improvements to rivers and harbors, etc., recommendations for the U.S. District Court judges, attorneys, marshals, etc., campaign assistance, cash contributions from the party's National Committee invitations to bill signing ceremonies, White House parties ought to accompany President on trips, bargaining and arm twisting, pressure and threats to lose the projects. Trump. Wow. That's it? Petrov. That's it. Putin. Perfect. Comrade Petrov? Petrov. Comrade Trump, are you ready for 2020 campaign? If there's no war, we give you full support again. Trump. To tell you the truth, I'm thinking about Ivanka. Putin. Me too. It's not a joke. Trump. My victory. Putin. Our victory. Trump. Okay, I did it for her, presidency I mean. And then I can, sorry, we can, elect her in 2020. Putin. Do you understand that we have to? Trump. Recruit her? It's a part of deal, right? Putin. Right. Petrov. Comrade President. Putin. I remember. Donald, my people in the White House told me something strange about Pence and Hillary. It's like conspiracy based on impeachment. Trump. Hillary? They kick me out, Pence is a president and Hillary takes his VP job? A Democrat? Impossible. Putin. First, it's a warning. Second, Obama proved everything is possible. Obama, big show, Pence plus Hillary much bigger as it's fresh. People love entertainment. Trump. She's danger. She came out of the woods and played resistance leader for a week. Then she disappeared. A snake is cooking something, no doubt, and what you dot dot what we gonna do about it? Putin. We watch. If it comes to some action, we kill them. But before we shoot, we send a warning and it usually works. You might be the messenger, why not? Trump. What else? Putin. Watch personal contacts between military leadership and weapons producers. And the unhealthy symbiosis between the CIA and the Department of State which is the chief underlying cause of the security position of the United States. And change the White House management style. I mean. Change the merry-go-round when people knock at the door whenever they want into a pyramid when you see key assistance only. In such a way we might cut the effing leaks from the Oval Office. Trump. Okay, we have to join the dinner now. Too much information, I need a good sip of Chateau Margaux. See you, Comrade Petrov. And dot 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 good night. Petrov. For some people it's a good night, Comrade Trump, but for many people it's the last night. Putin. Donald, sit down and relax. Thank you. Comrade Petrov told me we have a company. A lady, right? Open the door and let her in, please. Hillary Clinton enters the room. Trump. Nice setup. What else could I expect? Hillary. You are a setup and constitutional crisis yourself, Mr. So called President. Putin. Hillary is right. She's a friend and she's here on business. Hillary. Dealing with idiot is a paranoia. Did you tell him he's idiot? Putin. I did. Hillary. I wish his mother made an abortion and saved America long time ago. Trump. I'll tweet you back, don't worry. Putin. Guys, I was laughing too much over your debates to allow them here. So, Hillary has a proposal. What is it, dear First Lady? Hillary. To make a long story short. If you don't resign by the end of the year, I'll kill you. I have nothing to lose except my country and my nation. Trump. And more money than I got. Hillary. I'll spend all of it on your assassination. Trump. What the fuck is going on here, Vlad? Isn't the bitch your worst effing enemy? 
Putin. It matters, but I take her seriously. There were three political parties in America. Trump. Dash I know. Dems, Republicans, and Kennedys. Putin. Right. Kennedys are now Clintons. Trump. And all three belong to you, Vlad. Putin. Whatever makes you happy. Yes, First Lady? Trump. Stop it. My wife Melania is the First Lady. Putin. It's official, not personal. Trump. What? Putin. I talked to her for half an hour. Trump. Yes, I did you a favor, Putin. Thanks. Looks like she's not very happy with her marriage. Trump. That's a joke. Maybe, she'll be happy with you if you got $40 billion and if she believes media. But she's smart enough. I'm okay with my partner. Are you divorces, my friend? Yes, you are. Is Hillary, a lesbian, happy with my friend Bill? Don't think so. Hillary. Wow, Mr. Pervert is talking about family values. Trump. Watch you mouth. We turn personal, it looks like manipulation, or I'm terribly wrong, Vlad. Putin. You are. I didn't invite Mrs. Clinton. Hillary. My initiative. Trump. We could talk in Washington, New York, what's the problem? Hillary. Leakers, leakers, leakers everywhere. Trump. I'm not going to resign. And I know enough now to erase you. Hillary. Oh, really? Vlad told something on your Moscow shit, I don't remember the details. Putin. You both shut up. Donald, you better take her warning seriously. Intelligence community is 100% against you. Joint Chiefs love Hillary. Ideal situation for a coup. I like it. Petrov? Petrov. Sorry, I have to open the door for one more guest. Obama enters the room. Trump. Jesus Christ in heaven. That's why you came to Germany. Obama. First, Donald, we are in the same boat. Second, what happens here, dies here. I'm not gonna talk much. You are a racist, and you'll die a racist. And racists know something about black riots. Trump. Another threat dot 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 or warning? Can I talk? Putin. No. Obama. I don't need your answer. I just inform you. Putin. You can leave now. Trump. Hillary and Obama leave the room. Putin. What do you think about Trump? Petrov. Finished. Ready to sell his daughter. Putin. Economic nationalist. King of illusions. You think we can break America by the end of 2017? Petrov. Why not? He loves you to death and that's not because of Moscow hookers. Putin. Why, then? Petrov. You are stronger than money, comrade president. Stalin was the same. Remember what Churchill wrote about 1943 Tehran conference? Stalin was five minutes late for the first meeting and Churchill had to stand up when our leader came in, Roosevelt was in a wheelchair. Churchill said to himself that he won't do this again if Stalin plays same trick next day. Putin. And? Petrov. Stalin was late next morning. Churchill wrote, I don't know what happened to me when Stalin came in, I've jumped to my feet again. Stalin was the power. Putin. Interesting. Petrov. By the way, what we do to Mueller, he's digging up too much. Out of control. Sessions, Cummy, Kushner, Trump Jr. Putin. Nothing. It's a smoking screen. Petrov. Trump Jr. is pretty jealous of Kushner. We can use this to break the mafia. Putin, okay. What's espionage rule number one? Petrov. If you can't buy Trump and Hillary, sell them. Putin. Exactly. The end.